Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this video we're going to be taking a look at working with WooCommerce and dealing with the sometimes complicated process of setting up your shipping zones. So we're going to go through the basics, we're going to create a simple flat fee and we're going to take a look at some of the options that are available when setting up shipping zones and dealing with shipping inside WooCommerce in WordPress. So when you're ready to start setting up shipping inside WooCommerce, you simply come into the admin section, jump over to your WooCommerce section and come down to settings. And once you're inside settings, you just simply click on the shipping tab and that gives us three sets of options. If it's the first time you've logged in to set up any shipping zones, then the first thing you're going to see is this sort of wizard screen. We're going to go through that in a moment and we'll go through and set up the basics of some shipping zones. So as you can see from this wizard, it gives us a couple of examples of what shipping zones actually are. And as it says, it's a geographic region where a certain set of shipping methods or rates apply. So we're going to go through and set some things up. So you can take a look and underneath we've got rest of the world already configured in there. So there's some basic settings already set up for us. But let's click on add shipping zone and go through and set something that's a bit more sort of localized to the region or the country that we're working with. So I'm in the UK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the zone name up. We're going to say United Kingdom. We can set regions if we want to, and you can see we've got a whole range of options in there. And if we went through to different uh, sort of different countries, so if we just type in United Kingdom, for example, you'll see we've got UK as an option in there, and we can click on that. That now says that this is going to apply to anyone that chooses United Kingdom as their shipping address. Now, obviously, if you were dealing with a global website, you're going to set up a lot of different shipping methods and shipping zones and so on. The process is going to be the same. We're just going to keep it simple in this video and just deal with one, which is going to be the United Kingdom. We can limit it to specific zip or postcodes if we want to. And if we click on that option, it'll take us through and give us some additional options. Now, I don't want to limit this to any particular postcode, but if I wanted to, I could just simply click on that. You can see that opens up a dialog box that allows me to put in postcodes. Now, I don't have to put the full postcode in there. I can simply put in the beginning and then use a wildcard afterwards. So you can see in the example below, we've got CB23, and then we've got the wildcard, the asterisk. And then we can just put a string of different postcodes to apply this particular shipping method. And then when someone puts in their postcode as part of the shipping options, then it'll calculate their shipping charge which is based upon that. So pretty cool, pretty useful. Now then, next thing we need to do is save this out just to make sure we've updated all the changes. And then we're pretty much ready to move on. So let's just jump over to the shipping options next. So we click on that. That'll take us over and you can see we've got a couple of different options available on how we deal with the shipping charges. You can see the first thing is it allows us to choose how things are calculated. In other words, what calculations are shown on screen. So you can see we've got the enable the shipping calculator on the basket page and this will allow someone to put their postcode details in or their delivery details and it'll calculate based upon the information put in there if the shipping method is available. We don't want to use that. We want to use the hide shipping cost until an address is entered. So let's uncheck that one and set that because we want to make sure that no one sees a shipping charge until they put their address in there because that's what's going to dictate how much the shipping charge is going to be in this example. Next up, we've got a shipping destination. We've got three options available. And the one that I recommend choosing generally is the default to customer shipping address because you may have a customer that lives in one place, they want it shipped somewhere else, and that might be in a different state, a different country, where there's going to be a different charge. So their billing address and their shipping address are different, then obviously you need to make sure that you're charging them the right amount of money to ship to the address it's being shipped to, not where they're paying for it from. Hope that makes sense. But like you say, you've got a couple of other options on this. Let's just hit save changes on that to make sure we've updated that. And then finally, let's just jump over to the shipping classes. So as we go into there, we can now set up some shipping classes. Now, because we've set a flat fee or flat rate for our shipping charges, we're not restricted to only using one of them. We can use multiple different flat rates and even use one that if we don't choose a flat rate in the product itself, it'll default. In other words, a fallback number. So what I'm suggesting is we'll do two different shipping classes based upon a small item being purchased or a large item being purchased. So what we're going to do is we say add a shipping class and we're just going to call this small shipping. Obviously, you can make something a bit more sense than that. And we'll put the description in there, small shipping charge. And we'll put the amount in. And we'll say that charge is going to be 295. Now, you'll notice that at the moment, 
we have no option for being able to put the actual physical amount of money this is going to cost. Don't worry, we're going to come into that in a moment. Add a ship in charge, and we're going to call this one medium shipping. And we'll do the same thing again. So just copy that from there, paste that down there, and we'll set that charge to be 395. So we've now got two shipping classes set up. So let's just save that. Now, if we just jump back over to the shipping zones and we just open up the United Kingdom, which is the one we just set up, you can see it says add shipping methods to this zone. So let's just say add a shipping method. We're going to specify as a flat rate. We have three options available. We have flat rate, free shipping, and local pickup. Now, while WooCommerce out of the box is a very good piece of software, it does have a lot of restrictions in it because basically they're giving it away for free. And when anything comes for free, there's obviously a way that they need to make money. So what they do is they give you the basic functionality, but if you need something a bit more specific, for example, you need to have more control over your shipping options, they generally tend to offer a commercial add-on. Now, you're not restricted to only using the WooCommerce ones. There are also some great third-party support ones out there that are considerably cheaper and work just as well, if not better in a lot of cases. But like I say, for this, we're keeping this pretty straightforward. So we're going to go for a flat rate and we'll say add a shipping method. So we've got flat rate set up in there, so let's just go through and click on the settings. And as you can see, we now have a range of different options available. Because we've set up a couple of shipping classes, you can see that the next block of options apply to the shipping classes you created. So we've got the medium and the small shipping and so on. But let's start off with the first block. Your method title. So we've got flat rate in there. So we'll say, let's put that to flat rate shipping fee, just so it makes a bit more sense to the person seeing it at the end. Next up, is the shipping taxable? Are you paying tax on the shipping? If you are, then set it to taxable. If you're not, set it to none. The cost, we're going to leave a zero because, because we're going to be using these shipping classes and we're going to have a fallback. If we put a cost in there, it'll add it on top of any of the shipping class costs that we use. Now, you could this could be useful. You may have instances where you charge a flat fee and then based upon the item or items that someone's purchasing, there's an additional charge on top for each item that's purchased or for the total number of items that are purchased. Depends on how you want to work with it. For this example, I'm going to leave this set as zero so there's no flat fee being applied. Next up, let's go to the shipping classes. You can see we've got the medium shipping class, the small shipping class, no shipping class, and finally we have calculation type. So we know that this medium was 395, so let's set that to be £3.95, and we know that the small was 295. And let's just say we're going to have a fallback that if no shipping cost is calculated on there, we're going to have a shipping fee of 495. So that says if a product doesn't have any shipping class associated with it, then drop back and say 495 is going to be the shipping method. Finally, we've got the calculation type, which gives us two options. You can see we can calculate the shipping charge per class. In other words, it'll say it'll charge the shipping for each shipping class individually, or we can say per order. So charge shipping for the most expensive shipping class. So for example, let's just say we ordered two items that had the small shipping charge at 295 each and one item at 395 for shipping, then it would default to be 395 for the shipping because it would ignore the two lower amounts. So let's just set that to be the option. So we say charge shipping for the most expensive shipping class. So we've set everything up we need in there now. We hit save changes. That's now created our shipping methods and set our zones up and everything else. Before we can start using that in earnest, we need to go in and specify on the product how much the shipping charge is going to be per product. But remember, because we've set it up that if no shipping charge is configured, it'll fall back to that 495 shipping uh, sort of flat fee. But let's take a look. Go into the product section. Let's go and choose a product. So let's just say we'll have the Woo logo hoodie. Now we could, if we want to, go in and edit the entire thing, or we can use quick edit because that gives us a whole ton of different things we can do on there. And you can see that we've got the option for shipping. Currently, all our products are set to no shipping class because we hadn't set any shipping classes up when we installed it. So we can easily change that. Where it says shipping class, we can come down and you can see we've got our two options, medium shipping and small shipping. So for this item, we'll say we want the medium shipping, which as we know is 395. We'll hit update on that. Now if we open that product up, so let's just click on the product. And let's just open it up and take a look. So let's just open that up. There's our product, as you can see, 35 pounds. Let's hit add to basket. That's been added to the basket. Let's just jump over and view our basket. Now let's just get rid of the other one because I don't want that. That's from earlier on. 
So we can see we've got the product in there at £35, and as you can see, the shipping has been calculated in the flat rate shipping fee of £3.95. So our total, £38.95. So our shipping fee has already been set up, which is great. So that's how easy it is to create shipping charges. Now let's go and get rid of this product a second. Let's return to our shop. And let's put a product that we haven't put any shipping fee in there. And let's see what happens with that. So let's just say this Happy Ninja t-shirt. Let's add that to the basket. And then let's just jump over to the basket and take a look. So let's just click on View Basket. That'll take us over to our shopping basket. As you can see, our shipping, flat rate shipping fee of four ninety five. So it's done the fallback this time. It's gone, okay, you haven't set the shipping fee up on there. I don't know what to use. Ah, yes, I do. I'll just use that one. That's the default, and that's what's going to be charged. So very easy to do. Now, I know this has been a quite a sort of complex-looking way of setting things up, and WooCommerce isn't necessarily the easiest way of dealing with shipping, but shipping by itself is quite a complex sort of thing to set up, especially when you want to get into multiple different levels of shipping based upon location and country and things along those lines. But hopefully this is giving you an overview in how you can set up your shipping charges inside WooCommerce. Now, we'll take a look at more complex options in future videos, and we may even take a look at a couple of commercial add-ons that allow you to expand upon your shipping options to give you much more complex range of options available to you. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, pop them in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.